Hello watch lovers, friends old and new, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stian and today we have a different beast on the bench. We have a new old stock watch. This is a Tissot stylist from 1974. You can see from the price tag that it was uh, sold uh, new in Japan, or actually not sold new in Japan. Because that is exactly what a NOS watch or a new old stock watch is. It's a watch that was never sold when it was new. And it's thus still in its, uh, let's say, new condition. You can see the strap isn't entirely in the same condition as when it was new. That is the original Tissot strap with the original Tissot buckle. Well, that strap is obviously not good for much more than filling up our cylindrical archive. When we get uh, the plastic and uh, the other strap off, we need to clean our desk a little bit. Yeah, that's part of uh, life as a vintage watchmaker. But let's then have a look at the watch. For simplicity, I will just uh, refer to a uh, new old stock as NOS from now on. We can see it has this uh, label on the back saying Tissot, an Omega affiliated company. So Tissot was in a partnership, more or less, with uh, Le Mania and Novenga since the 1930s. And Omega was, of course, the big gorilla in the watch uh, industry back then. So they wanted to benefit a little from that. For uh, those interested, when you saw the price tag of 39,000 yen back in 1974, that would be about 700 dollars, 700 euros today. So uh, not a cheap watch. It has this uh, really cool and uh, very 70s uh, design, this uh, TV dial. And I see the dial is of course in uh, very good condition. But uh, someone has for sure opened the watch at some point. See some big fat fingerprints there on uh, the case. We can see the dial is uh, simply pressed into uh, the movement. It's just friction fit with a couple of uh, plastic or rubber tubes on the dial feet. As you can see, there's red ones on the right side. The movement itself is uh, the Tissot 2141, perhaps better known as the Omega 625. It is the exact same movement. But of course, Omega used to copper plate their movements. While this one has a simple gray finish. We also see the movement does not run whatsoever. The balance uh, doesn't seem to be damaged, but it's pretty much completely stuck. And the mainspring seems to be somewhat stuck as well. So let's uh, use that to uh, lead into this whole discussion on what a NOS watch actually means for a buyer. So new, old stock. The uh, old there is much more important than the new. Because uh, time does take its toll. Yeah, tell me about it, man. My knees hurt. My eyes aren't working as good anymore. And Oh, sorry. We're talking about watches, yeah. So you might have seen that uh, the dial, even though it's in really nice condition, uh, there was slight degradation here and there. And that is simply because of the chemical processes uh, over many, many years. The watch is uh, close to 50 years old. And even though 50 is, of course, not an age, I mean, <laughs> um, it still means that uh, some things do happen, both on the surface of things, uh, aka the dial, but then also uh, with the different uh, lubricants, for instance, used uh, inside the watch. Lubricants uh, are supposed to lubricate, but uh, when they are this old, they will turn to uh, kind of solids. And that's of course why nothing in this watch uh, moves. The lubrication is just way too old. And some of you might be thinking, uh, hey, uh, Stian, uh, isn't it uh, so that in the old days they used uh, organic uh, lubricants? Yes, they did. And uh, those definitely degrade faster and to a worse degree than the synthetic ones that we use today. But still, 
you have the same issue also with uh, today's uh, lubricants, just to a much lesser degree. But given that we're working on watches that are 50, 60 years old, a NOS watch from that period will have originally been lubricated with uh, natural oils, so either vegetable or mineral or animal oils. Now let's also have an in-depth review of uh, screwdrivers, Bergeau ergonomic ones versus uh, Horotech T-shaped ones. So uh, to help me on this, I invited an expert in the field. Hello, it's me. Okay, can I just put this in the cleaner, then I can go come play with you, okay? Yeah, I want to do this. I love doing the colors. Well, hang on, maybe you can do this one instead. Okay, but I like the shiny ones more. Yeah. Look at their shiny. No, but I'm using a shiny one now. It's me. Why just you... wait a few minutes and I'll but Why die. do you need the shiny ones? I like them better. <laughs> I like shiny ones also. So there you have it. Better up your game, Bergeon. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on the key demographic of six year old girls. Anyway, we managed to strip down most of the movement. We're going to take out uh, the shock settings. And we managed to really take out uh, the shock settings. So that little liar shaped spring just uh, flew off. Didn't go very far, but uh, they are a little bit of a pain to uh, put uh, back in, in particular due to the size of the movement. The movement itself uh, is only uh, 17 and a half millimeters wide. So that's a little bit more than uh, 1 16th of an inch. So not exactly a giant. We'll uh, put that in perspective a little bit later. But for now, we're not going to put uh, the spring back. We'll do that after we cleaned everything, which we're almost ready for. And first, we need to take uh, the mainspring out. Now, I mentioned before that uh, these old watches were originally lubricated with uh, organic oils and greases. And actually, this barrel had a pretty peculiar smell. So definitely something uh, died in there, kind of. At least it smelled like it. Definitely organic. So uh, for the size of this thing, the Swiss uh, sunk centimes, so a five cent coin, is pretty much exactly the same size as the total movement. And the barrel is uh, almost uh, half that size. So uh, about 0 0.8 centimeters. So there's a lot of spring inside that tiny little barrel. I'll give them that. Since we're dealing with a 50 year old uh, lubrication in this watch, uh, we're not just gonna peg the jewel holes. We're also gonna use uh, smoothing brooches uh, inside the jewel holes to make sure we get uh, everything uh, cleaned. Yes, we're going to use the very smallest one. I didn't measure the pivot uh, for the escape wheel, but I would guess it's around 0 0.7, 0 0.8 millimeters. So very tiny. We're going to take the worst gunk out of uh, the mainspring barrel. And we're also going to clean the pivots of the various wheels. For that, I'm using uh, something called Eve Flex. The finest uh, grade of that uh, does a very good job of uh, really cleaning the pivots without uh, actually polishing them and removing any metal. And with that pre-cleaning done, we can uh, put all the parts into the basket. There's not a lot of them in this uh, little watch. But let's then fire up the cleaning machine. This one is diesel driven. Spend about 3000 uh, liter of diesel every year to uh, drive the machine. But it's worth it.
All right, with uh, all the parts cleaned, we can uh, start by uh, lubricating uh, the barrel a little bit. And just to be clear, a little, little bit is uh, less than a little bit. Given uh, the barrel size, I'm actually using number two mainspring winder here. Not exactly the most frequently used uh, winder I have. But as alluded to before, watchmakers uh, are tool junkies. So uh, if we do use a tool like once every 20 years, it's definitely worth it. And there we are. Let's put the main spring back in the barrel. We're also going to put a tiny little amount of uh, grease on top of the main spring. And then we can put uh, the barrel arbor in. All right, with our barrel done, we can then look at the shock settings. And I just wanted to illustrate how ridiculously tiny those capsules are. So the smallest one is less than one millimeter in diameter. So uh, you really don't want to lose that one. We're going to put a tiny drop of oil in the middle of uh, capsules. The drop should be about half the size of uh, the jewel. And then we can put uh, the chaton on top. And assembled, this is how uh, big they are compared to my giant index finger. So yeah, if you press your finger on it, you might not even notice that it's stuck and then you might lose it. We're going to treat uh, a couple of the parts with a fixer drop. We're going to soak the escape wheel and we're going to dip the pallet jewels. So Fixodrop is the trade name for uh, a substance called Epilam. It's uh, steric acid. So uh, for those of you uh, familiar with all the staring candles, it's a little bit uh, the same type of uh, substance. So what it does is uh, leave behind a very thin layer on top of the metal or on top of the jewels in this case. And the effect of that is that the lubrication does not uh, creep as easily. You can also use it for the capsules. It's uh, less necessary there to be honest, but uh, it is also recommended that you do so. Let's then get uh, the balance uh, back together, put the shock settings in and see if uh, the balance oscillates uh, better now or at all. Quite fiddly given the size of uh, this uh, movement. And as you re might remember, the spring on uh, the dial side on the shock setting uh, flew off. So we're going to have to uh, put that back in place if we can only find it. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. One and a half millimeters long. So uh, steady hands there, old boy. Actually, we're going to use the microscope, which isn't actually that much easier for me because uh, my microscope is uh, binocular, meaning that when I videotape through it, as uh, here, I can only see with one eye. But eventually we're there, so let's see if uh, the balance oscillates. Yeah, that looks much better. All right, let's then continue with assembling the rest of the movement. And while doing so, I will also uh, talk a little bit more about the whole uh, NOS thing. So you will see uh, quite frequently that uh, 
a watch or parts for that sake is uh, presented as uh, NOS, new old stock. But how can you actually trust that it really is new old stock? For this watch, there is actually a tiny mismatch between uh, the label that was on the strap and the movement. And for those of you with a forensic bent, I'll uh, leave that up to you in the comments to uh, find out what that uh, little discrepancy is. But it should still be clear that this watch is actually a NOS watch. I don't think the movement has been worked on. The screws are uh, very untouched from what I can see. There are some marks, but that does not necessarily mean that uh, the watch uh, has been uh, worked on. Could be that some curious people opened it. But uh, given that the strap was in the condition that it was, it definitely looked like it was uh, 50 years old, stored in a pretty dry environment. But can you actually trust it if a seller on uh, eBay or Chrono24 for that sake says uh, watch is NOS? That's a good question, but there is no good answer, unfortunately. As with uh, everything, you pretty much have to buy the seller. And uh, keep in mind that, uh, especially on eBay, there's a lot of people also buying who don't necessarily know all that much and are just happy with their watch regardless. So uh, I did do a video on eBay duds, and all those purchases were from uh, sellers with a 99% or better rating. I used to have that as my, let's say, default uh, on eBay, that you don't want to buy anything from sellers with a less than 99% rating. But I still got some uh, fakes and frankens and duds, so yeah. The most important thing is to really educate yourself as much as possible if you are interested in the watch and never buy in a hurry. There will be other watches coming along. So we're going to put some uh, grease in the high friction areas in uh, the keyless works here. We've put this uh, blue grease, as uh, you saw, that's uh, Möbius 9504, it's specifically made for these very high friction uh, places where uh, basically metal rubs against metal and it does not rotate. For this uh, setting lever spring that it's called, which is actually a plate holding down uh, more or less all the components of the Achilles works, we're going to first screw the screws a little bit down and then we can press uh, the actual setting lever spring in place before we screw the plate completely down. It's just a little bit safer to do it that way so we don't put uh, too much uh, bend on uh, the spring there, that little arm sticking out. That is the part that uh, relatively frequently gets uh, broken in old watches. And after spreading the grease a little bit there, we're going to take the excess off. That is to simply avoid too much uh, grease uh, being exposed to dust and debris. Because when it's out in the open like that, it's going to basically trap all the dust that comes its way, and that's uh, obviously not good. And yes, a little bit too much oil there, but it's not uh, exposed, so that should be okay. For the click spring, it's a really good habit to use a probe or a piece of pegwood or something to hold uh, the spring down while you uh, put it in place. It does very easily ping, and then, uh, yeah, you'll get to uh, channel your inner one-year-old again by uh, crawling around on your knees looking for something tiny. All right, we're nearly finished uh, putting uh, the movement back together. Last thing we need to do before uh, getting the pallets in is to uh, put in the pallet fork, 
lubricate the pallet stones and then of course also lubricate uh, the various uh, jewel holes. Now there are a lot of ways to go about things in life and uh, lubricating pallet stones uh, can also be done in a lot of different ways. I like to just do it in situ like this. And yes, unless you have really sharp eyes, you probably need a microscope or something like that. But what we do is put a little bit of lubrication on uh, the exit palette there, that beautiful uh, rectangular red ruby. And then that spreads uh, lubrication over the teeth of the escape wheel. When putting the balance in place, what we need to make sure is that uh, the impulse pin on the underside of the balance uh, staff fits into the horns on the pallet fork. So that's why we rotate it a little bit to the side. Which side depends on which uh, side the pallet fork is uh, banking against. But that is that's why we rotate the balance before putting it in. Alright, let's get some uh, oil into the jewel holes. We use uh, thicker oils for the slower rotating wheels that also have more torque on them. So basically the closer you get to the barrel, the thicker the oil. And then we can demagnetize the movement. That is something we do in two steps. First we press the demagnetization button once, then we turn the movement 90 degrees and then demagnetize again. And the 90 degrees is because of the way electricity and magnetism is related. All right, we see there's a pretty significant beat error. So let's take uh, the beat error out and then we can adjust uh, the timekeeping afterwards. This movement has a mobile stud carrier that we can gently move a little bit in one direction or the other to get the beat error down to a zero or as close to zero as possible. And when the beat error is okay, we can uh, move uh, the index. And that basically makes the active hairspring longer or shorter. The longer the hairspring is, the slower the watch is going to run. And with those adjustments, uh, we are pretty happy with this. The beat rate wouldn't go all the way down to zero, but uh, this is quite okay. As I mentioned before, uh, the dial is just pressed into uh, the movement. There's no uh, screw holding uh, the dial feet. And it is a lovely dial. Blue dials are always uh, very popular and this uh, sunburst is just beautiful. It is a stylist watch for sure. When we're pressing the hands on, we basically want uh, the hand to be level with the top of its uh, tube. So there we can see the hour hand is level with the top of the hour tube. And then we're checking that uh, the hand is parallel to the dial so that it doesn't rub against anything. And then we can place the minute hand and uh, rinse and repeat. Now, if the hour hand uh, has moved a little bit or is uh, slightly off 12, then we just put the minute hand uh, correspondingly to the side. So by my judgment, it's a couple of minutes past 12. So we'll try that. Yeah, that looks all right. Okay, let's uh, move on to the case. The crystal uh, does have a few uh, small scratches. They're all very shallow, so we don't have to uh, use sandpaper on it. The case itself is, of course, in a very fine condition. Mostly just finger marks and some smudging. So uh, let's just uh, clean it and then we can uh, deal with those tiny scratches in the crystal afterwards.
God, I love that sound in the morning. All right, let's turn to the crystal. We're simply going to use some uh, Poliwatch for those tiny scratches. Poliwatch is a very, very fine abrasive that uh, takes out small scratches, but it's of course not uh, something you can use if the scratches are deeper. And if you don't have Poliwatch, you can try a toothpaste. That also works. Also very fine abrasive. And after a couple of minutes of rubbing, we can uh, turn the crystal 90 degrees and uh, take out the scratches that are formed in that direction. All right, after cleaning up the crystal, it looks uh, much better. This uh, crystal should be uh, possible to just uh, click, press into uh, the case. But it's a special kind of crystal. Uh, it's not so easy to get anymore, so we're going to reuse it and uh, to make sure that it doesn't come out because it's not that tight, I'm going to use a little bit of a uh, type of uh, glue that we mostly use for uh, mineral glasses. But it works fine in this uh, case as well, pun intended. It's uh, completely transparent and uh, becomes invisible after uh, you uh, use it, but you have to cure it with the ultraviolet uh, light. And if you don't have a watchmaker's curing lamp, any uh, old-fashioned tanning lamp will do. So we'll cure it for a couple of minutes and then we're going to let it rest for a few hours. And uh, the flickering is only on camera. It's a refresh rate of my mobile phone, I think doesn't flicker like this uh, in uh, real life. But we'll let it cook for a couple of minutes and after that we'll let it set and then it should be just fine. Oh, that's a very satisfying snap. Just a shameless plug before we put the watch on the wrist. On vintagewatchservices.eu you will find more than 100 beautiful watches. As a YouTube subscriber you will get 10% off. So if you're looking for a watch, check it out and let me know. And there we have it. Very stylish and very 70s uh, NOS watch. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then clicking like and subscribe will uh, certainly help the channel. We'll be back shortly with another video. Until then... Ta-ta!